Welcome everybody back to the channel. My friends, I'm so happy to have Leonard Lunza with us today. Thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you. Here. So, for somebody who may not know, you're the co-founder of Gleis and, and you reinvent sustainable health. You're also yeah. very active at Sigma Square and the war and manage more. So we're going to talk about kind of your journey as well. Yeah. And We'd like to kind of start in the channel with some rapid fire questions, so to okay. kind of get to know you a little bit cool. better. Um, so you describe yourself as an optimistic realist. What does that mean? Um, yeah, what the, does this mean? I think um, I'm an optimist by nature. Mm -hmm. By far, there is nothing else like optimism. Um, but over the last years, I also discovered that. Also, working in entrepreneurship, you definitely need the yeah realism, and um, then I started also to yeah question some things, and now I will frame it more like um, an optimistic realist. But still, the optimism is by far the biggest yeah biggest scale in in my body and in my mind. It's really yeah. nice. It, it translates to uh, <laughs> how you show up. So that's a, a very nice that's thing. Super cool. So I saw that you were also kind of into emotional brand and how you design yeah. them and I was just wondering what makes a good emotionally designed brand? Wow, okay, that this is a huge topic. But, uh, <laughs> first um, thing that comes to okay, mind. Okay, first thing that comes to my mind, it's it's like empowering um, and I think, um, yeah, the, the best examples are Apple and Nike, for example, they are like, they have the, the so-called hero so um, they build a brand that they show what what it feels like to be a hero and then they also create i think space or um, a scenario where the customer feels like a hero and i think this is especially what makes so yeah brands great and there is there is a lot more um, but i think this is one of the most important things the empowering um, way how brands uh, are and also that it needs to be consistent through the entire brand that there is um, yeah that the visualization um, and everything um, is a consistent image that's super interesting just yeah. as a note because i think it's also i mean it's shown in, in psychology also like you're kind of the protagonist of your life story yeah and, and i think yes, that, that taps it. into that yeah. a lot as well i think that's it yeah. cool so uh, you said also kind of LinkedIn that you were kind of between humility and megalomania. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, um, that this is very funny because like the, the LinkedIn description, I was like, okay, let's write this and let's write that. It's, and it's a lot of things. Yeah, and I was like, like okay, um, that's super cool. That's super nice. I think I, I had also something really weird in the middle of the text um, where I just put a random, random fact. Um, but I think between humility and megalomania, it's like uh, I want to go big all the time. So like it's it's like I love it to think big and have a great vision and want I, I want to reach impressive things in life. But on the other side, um, and that's also the the humility is it's not about money or it's not about being the best in every case because if I think about what really makes me happy it's like I, I don't need much I'm, I'm happy when I have great conversations with people especially meaningful conversations so when you talk about things that actually matter and yeah I'm also super happy when I'm when I'm going out having a great time with friends and um, especially one time a year I go canoeing with my with my friends from my hometown and this is I don't know. I need like 50 euros for three to four days having an amazing experience and I love it and I don't need more. But on the other side, I think um, I want to I wanna have a huge impact in life and I want to impact the world. And I think that's the, that's the difference between uh, humility and megalomania. So on one side, everything needs to be huge, have, has a great vision. But on the other side, I think when it comes down to what I really need in life, I would say it's it's not much to be actually happy. That's super yeah. cool. So that's a very nice uh, <laughs> to me. I mean, yeah. you kind of took it already ahead, but uh, I love the question. Everybody, every guest get that. Um, when do you feel most alive? 
Mm, yeah, I, I think in those two situations. Right. I think uh, on the one hand side, being with the craziest entrepreneurs you can find, or the craziest people there, they don't need to be entrepreneurs, but they need to have drive. I think that's one of the most important things when it comes to people I want to interact with, that they have drive. And doesn't matter in which area, but um, that they want more in life, that they have a vision, that they that they can't sit still, that they want to do things. I think that's the one thing to be with those people and build things with those people, no matter what. It could also be, I don't know, uh, something which has nothing to do with entrepreneurship in the first, yeah. in the first point. And on the other side, um, what makes me super happy is the, yeah, just being in the moment, having um, maybe the canoeing, being in nature and just have a great time. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So let's dive deeper into kind of your personal journey. Okay. Um, so you have this great format, right? Healthcare Minutes. Uh, I love kind of keeping in there. I um, also check it out yeah. on LinkedIn as well. So I'm just wondering kind of what would be your three main takeaways um, so far from kind of conducting that? Um, the three main takeaways. First, I don't know if it's healthcare minutes or founding in the healthcare area, but healthcare is extremely hard. So it's like, it's like super difficult to, to navigate the healthcare landscape because there is so much you need to keep in mind. But on the other side, there are incredible people. And I think that's, that's also my main takeaway. Those incredible people are super helpful. So they are like, they're like, hey, okay, you need help by that. Just set up a call. and. I'm also in, in some communities where there are international um, leaders of in healthcare companies and there are like people who are in, I don't know, billion dollar companies and they are C-level and you can approach them, yeah, I have a problem, can you maybe answer this question? And I think this is incredible that those people still take the time to help you. Mm -hmm. and. I know the, yeah, that the support system is also huge in the entrepreneur ecosystem, but in the entrepreneurship ecosystem, but especially in healthcare, people are super willing to help you. And I think that's one of the um, main takeaways. And the last, maybe, you don't need to have all the skills. I think it's impossible to have, the, to have all the skills to navigate healthcare alone, but there are incredible people that are willing to help you if you ask the right questions and if you are humble and um, maybe also if you are a forward giving person, they are, they will give also. So I think that's, that's super, super cool. And sometimes they, they also not give when you give, they are like more givers. They just are yeah, open and say, yeah, of course I will help you. And if nothing comes back, then yeah, it's also cool. Yeah. I think that's something I, I've, I've profited myself a lot from that and I, I would hopefully do that also. I, I think that would be my ambition to do that also in the future because I think when people come towards you, I think having that mindset that you still give back to people yes, who, are, who are interested, who want to do something and you can help them with your knowledge and your expertise, I think that would be super nice and, and really important to remember that you were once at that point as well and somebody mm. helped you along the way and I think that perspective is, is extremely important. Yeah, and I think those people have to had the same experience. So back then, they were also they had also people yeah. who were way more experienced. And in my case, it's the same. If someone approaches me because he or she has a question, I'm always open because most of the things I could do in my life uh, were dependent on people that helped me and supported me. So I think this is one of the most important things also in my life that I was supported by. I don't know. I, I can't I can't count it or I can't say some names yeah. because it's incredible and I think that's only the reason why I why it was possible to do things like uh, I can do them now yeah I, yeah I think that's something which is just shapes so much our human interactions like how mm -hmm. that's the essence of everything kind of and I think sometimes you you forget that and I don't know but it's a very important perspective to have that, uh, yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about um, Head Farmer So I, I saw the video <laughs> you were in as well. So I'm quite interested in kind of how was that time there for you? How did it shape you? Because it's about, all about the tech transfer, right? So yeah. I think it's a very interesting proposition. Oh, it was an amazing time. <laughs> <laughs> Short and, and sweet. Yeah. Um, uh, wow. I love a hat. Um, 
I think it's it's a place where where innovation um, happens and where um, they try to build a support system for the people who can actually um, change and impact the world in a way that only few people are able to. And um, yeah, that was super cool to also build it from the ground on. I started, when I started, I didn't know how many people we were, but um, mostly I worked with my boss um, and she co-founded um, AHEAD. And it was so nice because the purpose is to support and empower the world's best scientists to bring their science to life. So to transfer their science and create the interface so that it really can create some value. Because I think that's also one of the things why I had um, started. There is so much great science mm -hmm. out there. It's like incredible. But most of the people are not able to transfer it and to create the interface so that it that you have, um, that someone can experience what they did. And I think that's exactly what AHEAD is also aiming for, to, um, yeah, to create or to empower the people to bring their science to life and turn it into impactful uh, companies. Super cool. I think, and it's probably more pronounced in the natural sciences, but I think in general, kind of the research, when I was at that conference, I thought there's so many interesting yeah. <laughs> impulses and, and a lot of um, startups could use actually what is being presented there. Like, but yes. there's not the transfer, yes. right? It stays at that scientific yeah. conference and I'm like, that could yeah. be super interesting. So I think that connect is really missing. Like it's a very bubbly, everybody lives in their little bubbles and yeah. it's kind of difficult to, to get that information flowing. I think it's still difficult and but but there is also a I love this uh, this project. It's like called um, it's from Fraunhofer Venture and the Hat. It's like called CoLab, and they match existing startups mm -hmm. with scientists that have the technology the startup needs, nice. and they have even more power because there is a super ambitious founder and then the scientists, and then they can work together and you combine best of both worlds. And I really love the concept because I think. Right now, um, the general tech transfer needs to mature a little bit more until it really works well. But in this case, it's really it works perfect because you have the people who have to drive, who definitely want to drive their startup forward, and then you have the, the scientists who really are striving to bring their science to life and their research. And I think that this is this is just a great concept. Yeah. Oh. So a year ago you were kind of at different conferences, so, so the Digital yeah. Middle Conference and the DLD Conference. So it's just interesting to see kind of you were pitching back then and now yeah. you're, you're officially found and everything. And, and I'm just wondering like over the past year, if you were to reflect back, like how has maybe your vision, your team, kind of your product changed? What has remained the same? How has been that time for you? Oh yeah, it was a very, yeah, it was a very, how to call it? A lively time. Um, we did a lot and we also iterated a lot and um, I think back then, well I think the Digital Medicine Conference is way back some time but um, yeah I think it, it has changed that we have the first um, the first application of, of our algorithm um, so we, we had the first application, we developed it for a type 1 diabetes in that case and physical activity and we are also currently in a clinical trial with the Imperial College, the University of Graz and the University of Bayreuth to, um, to test this uh, concept and bring it to the market. And I think what happened lately is also to, um, to look into other application areas. Where can we also um, yeah, apply the algorithm which combines your personal health data with the newest scientific findings and medical guidelines to create a system that empowers people to make informed decisions and proactively uh, shape their health. And uh, I think that changed also that we are um, currently looking in, yeah, also in the next uh, application field where this technology can be applied. I think that's so powerful and we're going to talk about um, this in, in a minute as well more, but because I know so many people who maybe want to better their health, but they don't know where to start because, I mean, there's so much, yeah. I mean, you're probably not going to read the scientific literature anyway, but even if you just yeah. listen to news that people will say, 
veganism and then all those plants are killing you just eat just eat meat and then there is <laughs> like keto there is yeah. just so many things and i think that if you don't have that background you can't really tell what is the right thing for you and then you're just like okay whatever i'll stay with my western <laughs> diet which is uh, definitely not good for us yeah and that's it the, you, the, the information is there and you also of course your personal health data is also there but to combine it I think there is currently a trend where this yeah, goes yeah. more and more forward, but we are still at the beginning of this and this will definitely be a revolution because you, because we also treat so many things with method stuff that actually don't work that good and you can prevent those ways of preventing um, uh, diseases if you just um, understand what you really need to do. Because what I learned also during the time not everyone really knows what they need to do, also if they should know. Um, and science has definitely the power to help in this, uh, in this case. So you were kind of awarded the Innovation Award in 2021 for your research into kind of high-tech and deep-tech venturing. I'm wondering what would be kind of your key takeaway to somebody from your research? Mm. I think one of the most important key takeaways is that um, I put so much effort into this system and I try to create the perfect system to create an, um, I don't know how to, how to call it, an innovation building structure where you just need to follow the road and you, you have all the resources you need, you have all the information you need. And I think uh, the thing I realized was that it's cool but it's way too theoretical and it will never work because there are so many theories out there how to do things and how things are actually um, being done is just by doing things and not thinking about every step 10 years but just do things iterate or, or do things learn iterate and repeat and i think that was something that the system yeah, didn't have uh, so much in, in, in detail that you that it's more about doing things than rather having the perfect strategy right. and uh, knowing exactly which information you need at which point. So, yeah. So you also describe yourself maybe as kind of finishing off um, the personal part um, as an innovation architect, right? And to build these, as you said right now, strategic mm -hmm. innovation ecosystems. Um, what would be, apart from maybe the iterating and building part, something, a skill or a learning which people um, should take away from that or which, which is the most important one, let's say? Mm, do things. Do things? Yeah, That's absolutely. It. Absolutely do things. Um, there is a lot you can do and theory is also is very important and especially strategy is super important because you need to do the right things at the right, um, time. At the right time. But yeah, that, that, that's something you, you can't impact. So do things and then let's see if uh, timing and preparedness meets opportunity. I right. think there are so many things you can't influence that um, you also need to have a bit of a trust and then do things and do your best. Yeah. and then things will happen and most of the time this is also super interesting when it comes to investors it, you don't know what what will happen in the end and also investors sometimes they they invest because they think wow that this is a cool purpose this is a cool vision this is a cool team and that team can actually I, i'm talking about very yeah. early stage um and this can be this is a great vision and uh, great things can can start out of this but they know that what they are, what the team is doing now, they are very likely to not do this in two to three years because they will iterate and go other ways. But um, and I think that's that's the thing. Just do things, and then you will learn on the way. Don't plan too much because your strategy will it will change over time. And the way more important skill is to have the ability to iterate fast, learn fast, and then repeat doing things. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think that um, part of the, the team, I mean, I did like a mini research thing on kind of um, venture capital decisions and yeah. how they choose that. And I feel like it's a double-edged sword because on the one hand, like it's natural that if the idea is going to change, you have to rely on the team. And then it's kind of yes. also prone to a lot of biases. I mean, similarity, general, like there are a lot of them. So I feel like 
I don't know, it makes sense why you decide that way, um, mm. but then it's also inherently flawed, which makes sense because we're all human. So yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. So let's talk a little bit about Glace, um, your startup kind of you're working on. So it's all about, or your vision or mission is really reinventing sustainable health for a fulfilling life. And yeah. so maybe you could give us a little bit of context on what does that mean for you? Yeah, and just kind of the implementation of that. I think we, we all know that health is one of the most important things in your life. So I think that's, that's the core because a fulfilling life is that there is no way to have a fulfilling life if you're not healthy. Yeah. So this is the, the, the combination here. And sustainable health is that currently we are, we are in a, I would call it like sick system. So you get help or um, we start uh, treating things when we see, oh, this person is sick or um, is injured or, um, and we don't do something before that. And I think sustainable health is more on the side of preventing things mm -hmm. and also more on um, how can I um, create a system that supports people to make informed decisions to take their health into their own health, uh, into their own hands. And I think this is super important and also at the core of, of what we are doing at Glaze because um, sustainable health uh, needs to be reinvented because currently the system is like more like treating sicknesses instead mm -hmm. of making sure that you're a healthy person. And yeah, I think that that's, that's also the core, that we are empowering people to go more on the prevention side instead of uh, treating things when, when it's, to be honest, already too late sometimes. Exactly. And I, so I did like in, in Rome uh, functional medicine, I, I studied oh, I cool. that. Oh cool, nice. Really funny. I, I did like a humanistic semester there. And, and, and also the bits and pretzels about degenerative diseases yes. and how much yeah. you can do with, with lifestyle choices. And, and I feel like that's something you're not taught Absolutely. Anywhere, like <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's so important and so cool that you are really working towards that because I mean, from a people-centric perspective, yeah. it's so important. But even if you were just purely economic and looking at, uh, and it also makes sense, you know. Like I mean, yes, one hundred percent. If you're saying like I don't care about that, it, it still makes so much sense. And I think, I mean, I think it's the, the main cause. I think people are dying from metabolic diseases at this point, yeah. uh, or from things which you can actually influence. So I think that's very tragic, actually. That's it. But yeah. You, you, you are at the core, that's it. And uh, I think currently also with the longevity uh, movement we are having, um, of course this is more a trend and yeah, now, now I would call it maybe for rich people to prolong the lives. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, the things that we are discovering during that, uh, during that journey are helping millions of people later on because we can develop new treatment opportunities out of the longevity research. And especially, I think it's Brian Johnson. He's a super, yeah, super rich man. He's so cool. Yes. I was gonna say Brian yes. Johnson. No way, that's so nice. <laughs> to be honest, um, I love it because he does, I don't know how many things, and it's completely, it's it's too much maybe. Yeah, but yeah. What, what his vision is also to, to use the, the insights mm -hmm. he creates to then, um, yeah, further develop how we treat people and how you can have a better life. So I think what he does is incredible for humanity that he yeah, researches and he maybe maybe I would call it like that. Maybe that's a bit too much, but he he decided to to give his body and his life to science. To, to science. Yes, I think that that's what he's doing. And this is super cool. Yeah, for somebody who may not know, so Brian Johnson uh, was this entrepreneur who did yeah. a pretty good exit and then it was kind of all about health, right? And how yeah. do you kind of reverse age? And I think he achieved like seven years, I'm not sure. And, yeah. and, he, and he kind of shares like what does he eat, what medical supplements he takes and all of that. And, and, and yes, yeah, so it's, it's very interesting, I think, from that perspective. I feel like uh, that's something a little bit off topic, but which a lot of people struggle with is kind of the emotional side of things. Because mm. I feel like oftentimes people, like if you have that information, you know what's good for you, right? And then, yeah. but in day to day life, there's like we're surrounded by all these kind of, I don't know, these highly processed foods, and, and people just really struggle. I see it in my family where people have diabetes, they know what to do. 
But then the step to do that at the birthday party to say no, I'm not going to eat the cake and stuff. And, and and Brian Johnson he was asked like, do you does that not do you not miss the donor? And he was like, no, because I I know this is like for my longevity. But I feel like that step to do that is very difficult. Yeah, and I think what what's also super important is to find out what has the impact yeah because this is also the super interesting part okay i think if you eat cake every day it's not healthy yeah. but if you understand really how your body reacts to food intake sometimes you might also realize wow oh, it's definitely okay if i eat vanilla ice or it's a problem if i eat brown rice which is by nature healthy but your system or in in in, in this case your glucose level peaks exactly. And this is like sometimes you, you can't say this is good, this is bad to all the things, mm -hmm. but you, it's, it's a very individual thing. So you need to use data and your personal health data and then create an individual support system. And that's exactly what we are also yeah, doing and striving for. That is insane. Yeah. I'm really happy that you're doing that. <laughs> no, really, because I, I, yeah. I heard about that also, like that it de depends so much on the person, how much your consuming index yes. changes. And I, yes. and I would say, I have no idea, like uh, how that, I mean, I can maybe tell I crash more when I eat a lot of sugar, but like, let's say that the nuances, um, that is so individual and, and health is a really yes. a thing where people, if you have that data, that's insane that you're doing that in place. Yeah, I love it. That's <laughs> super cool. And I think everyone in our team loves it and that this is this is a great thing that that is also the thing that unites us that we are striving for the same mission and that we have the same passion yeah. so that kind of brings me very smoothly to the follow-up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. question because I'm um, so you're four yeah. co-founders right and yeah. um, so I was just wondering how did you maybe meet and did you have from the very beginning that intention that you wanted to go into that space um, that that's the magic of manager more right. um, yeah. <laughs> manager more that's that's yeah just just the magic so we met uh, as a whole team at manager more and we had the passion of doing th something in healthcare right. everyone that this is also I think one of the things that unites us most that we really want to impact people's lives and that we want to do it in the healthcare area and then um, we started with a project uh, in diabetes and we realized that some of our people in, the close, in our close environment, they, they had type 1 diabetes and so we, we went a little bit in that direction and now we also realized that in our closest surroundings, even family, um, that yeah, people are suffering also from uh, yeah, more on the pre-diabetes to diabetes type 2 side and so there, there sparked a new passion also on that topic and yeah i think that's how we met and yeah manager more did a perfect job i think yeah that's it yeah uh, yeah i think that's, that's such an interesting feel i mean i can tell from my family most people are mm. pre-diabetic or like very much on the verge yeah and, it's incredible and but yeah. what i find so interesting about your data driven approach is that i also know people who by let's say outside perspective for example they eat very very healthy like everything very clean mm. but they may have for example issues with sleep or something and, and something which is not all, all other markers yes. so it's not just <laughs> the nutrition part and then people are like what i'm pre-diabetic but i'm doing everything right and then just kind of empower yeah. these people to do the right things for for them personalized it, this is incredible like how stress impacts our yeah. health like how sleep if you're sleep deprived there are so many things and we are right now we have the technology more and more to measure exactly that so we have the we have the apple watches we have the ura rings we have like the the cgms which are on the rise so there are like yeah currently there are only two companies but we have we have insights that huge companies are working yeah. also on cgms one of the world leaders and nearly everyone wants to go in that topic so the, the, the whole topic of measuring biomarkers to understand what you need to do will, I think, explode in the next years. And it's it already started, but yeah, it, it will be super nice. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it because I love it. You yeah. can really tell you're very passionate yeah. about it. So maybe just kind of rounding it up for a yeah. place, um, what would be kind of your highlights and your lowlights of your journey so far? Well, that's also interesting. I think the low light was definitely when we realized how hard it is to, to fund healthcare. And mm -hmm. especially because 
um, the healthcare system is so complex and you need to keep so many things in mind and I think we needed like more than more than one and a half years to navigate that landscape mm -hmm. just all, only navigating it and now we are at the point where we we really understand how things work and where we also have not only understand but where we also know the people who understand it in super detailed way and um, we can approach them and they they help us and i think that's that was one of the low lights when we realized wow this is super super hard mm -hmm. and we started it because we thought it will be easy maybe because you build a great product and this is also the, the uh, one of the one of the big low lights when we realized that by building a great product you're not building a great healthcare solution because you need also um, a sustainable business model to to keep it alive because in healthcare there are super yeah it sounds a bit wrong but super cool problems and you can build amazing solutions around them but to build really a company that that is sustainable and that um, that has the power to generate so much um, income in a sustainable way that it can survive is not that easy and you, you see it also there are a lot of com healthcare companies out there struggling except there are huge farmers they, they just print money but yeah. um, on the other side it's it's like super hard and when we realized that I think that was a low light and also um, when we uh, when we realized that the business model we first started is not working because um, we have too much depend we had too much dependencies in the beginning mm -hmm. and um, I think that that was a big big low light and yeah the highlights is like yeah working working on on such a topic um, also the clinical trial with the Imperial College University in yeah. Bayreuth in Graz this is like abs absolutely a highlight then the highlight was when we were at ATDD and there were so many people interested and came to our booth and we were asking questions how they could help us and it's like it's insane how many people offered help like from a farmer executive to a doctor to that there are so many people who supported us and who support us along the way and I think this is absolutely a highlight and also a highlight that was when for me a personal highlight um, when I uh, came back from Berlin to Munich and uh, I was able to start uh, working in a team at one place again because that was definitely something I missed in, in the, when I was in Berlin and this is absolutely in highlight because I see um, that the productivity in our entire team when we work together is like skyrocketing and we have so much more fun and it's so cool to, to love together to... And yeah, I think the, the fun part, mm -hmm. one of the most important factors if you found a company is also having fun. If you're not having fun, you, you, you won't be able to do it for on the long run. Yeah. And I think that that was also a huge highlight for me personally. That's yeah. so cool. And uh, when I talked with Thomas, he was also like talking about humor, right? And yeah. the importance yeah. of humor. Yeah. And I think that makes it, yeah, because it's like such a roller coaster ride that you yeah. kind of need to look at it with a, I don't know, if you've got a great team, that's yeah. that's gonna make all the difference really. I think it's super easy to to go to approach it with ease. Mm -hmm. So because you will have huge setbacks, especially in healthcare, and if you're taking everything too serious then you won't survive long because you you will you will lose your passion you will lose your motivation you will lose your fun you will you will lose everything and that's exactly why it's so important to have more the east side to approach things and try to always make sure that you see your vision that you have fun and that you enjoy working on what you're doing that's so interesting and so I, I love asking that when you feel a life question and a lot of times it comes out like the playfulness, like people really, yeah, they, <laughs> no, I don't know, I feel like it's something you, I mean, of course, business yeah. serious and stuff, but I think it's important to not forget that component because it's something which I feel a lot of people equate with being younger and just where everything was carefree. Yeah. But yeah, it's just nice to kind of, I don't know, it's not going to help you like if you're super like, I don't know, forbidden yes. <laughs> or whatever. Uh, and, and, I think I think that's the key, and also when when I when when I try to communicate to the outside, I always try to yeah this is professional. Yeah. Then there is a format, and 
I'm, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and there is a project and we closed this topic and then we worked on that. But if you really work together, yeah. it's super important to, to switch to the, okay, let's, <laughs> let's take this and let's make this work. And yeah. if you have that energy, you're like, okay, it doesn't work, but we will make it work. <laughs> it's like, then it's like, switch. then everyone is like, okay, let's do it. Yeah. And this is one of the most important things. So let's talk a little bit about Aurora. So you're a venture partner there, so congrats, yeah. it looks like an insane project for you. So for somebody who maybe doesn't know, kind of what is the vision of Aurora, yeah, what is it all about? The vision is, I think, I think that's a, that's a question, that of course, Daniel can, can answer way better. Um, but um, maybe you will be also, in, uh, he's super interesting maybe also to talk about because I think it's also quite important for the Munich ecosystem yeah, um, because it can have a huge impact uh, like Eva. I think the mission is, uh, the vision is to, to empower the best or the, the most ambitious uh, people to create entrepreneurial solutions. Right. Um, that, that's what, what, in my words, I would say uh, Ivor is. And they do it because, and they are able to do it because there are a lot of programs out there who have the same vision. Mm -hmm. But I think, and this is especially incredible at Ivor, and that's also the reason why I was like, wow, this is so <laughs> huge. They have everything they need. They have like super experienced founders in their founding team. So right. like, Alex, who did uh, um, who did a uh, half a billion uh, exit with Pro, Pro Gloves, so the co-founder of, of Thomas, then Daniel, who founded several companies, then one of the, the the I think most active angels in Germany. So they really know what they are doing. Yeah. And I think this is the reason why I love it. And then they have a huge network of they they have the entire network or access to the entire network of Sigma Square Society. So to I don't know nearly 1,000 entrepreneurs worldwide, and they yeah they can can connect you with anyone and also the founders especially Daniel they have a huge network like it's insane and I think they know what a startup needs at the right time because they are of course they are theory because they are like uh, entrepreneurship can uh, can be taught I think that that was something uh, they told one time um, but they really know what you need when and they are not like okay let's do this let's fill up 10 business model canvases but they are like do what you need at the, at the moment and they will challenge the people um, when they think they are doing the, the wrong things um, and I think that's super cool I think they, they have everything an accelerator and precedes uh, uh, venture capital needs to yeah to bring to bring amazing startups to life. Awesome. So, what does it mean for you to be a venture partner? Like, what can participants expect? Um, I think a venture partner is like I, I would call it like maybe soft due diligence. So, mm -hmm. um, there are also um, some some other venture partners, and everyone has a huge network and is very well connected with all the the local and the also global uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem. And so you know what's going on and you know the people who are building, mm -hmm. who are building great solutions. Yes. And so the venture partners are, I, I would call it, they do a soft due diligence. So they, they um, there is a way how you can apply and then there is a way how you, how a venture partner can, can forward you and um, bring those people where they see the high, the high potential into the program and I think that's that's again a super nice idea because it, Daniel just leverages a huge network and it's a win-win situation for everyone so he decided so or they decided that it's like for the venture partners a win situation for the uh, people who apply um, a win situation and for Evo a win situation so and I think this is also what he's incredibly good at in creating win-win situation for everyone. That's a huge gift. <laughs> yeah, huge gift. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we talked a lot, a lot about network, like maybe off script, but what would be your main tip for somebody who wants to build a personal network, would you say? Um, going out, talking to people and always offer help. Because um, yeah. 
the networks where I'm in, I'm also in networks where I'm like, yeah, okay, this is cool, but it's not incredible. Yeah. But the networks that are incredible, they filter for one thing. And this is, they filter for givers. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you give, no matter if you receive afterward. Yeah. So this is like, okay, I need help. And then you're like, I approach this person and he or she will directly help you. And I think this is super, super helpful. If you're, if you're just like, hey, I want to create amazing things. And if someone else creates amazing things, I will help them. And if you have that, that personality, absolutely. I think by, by nature, you will develop a network. And going, on, going out, dare to go out and talk to people. Because people who will actually benefit your network, they will never criticize you if you go out too early. Because they are like, hey, you're a little bit early, but I will help you to get to the next step. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, they are anxious about going out, being present and showing the world what they are doing and telling what you're doing. And I think this is one of the most important things. Show up and tell the world what you're doing. Just like, hey, I want to create X, Y, Z and I want or I need help and wait, no, sometimes you don't even need to say that you need help but if you say, hey, I'm creating XYZ, a person which already does it, people, t people love to help. So this person might approach you and be like, hey, I can help you do an intro here or I can help you because I can challenge your concept if you like and that happened to me, that happens to me on a, I think, weekly basis maybe. And I think that's one of the most important things. Just go out and talk to people. I love the givers part. That's how I think yeah. we as a society can make something. When, when yeah. you give and, and you don't expect it back because otherwise you sometimes become bitter, I feel yeah. like. It's like, oh, I gave so much and nothing came yeah. back. But that's not, just do it yeah. and then you see what happens and maybe it doesn't come back. That's totally fine because I think you, you know that you gave something back. And that's such a beautiful yeah. thing. I don't know. It's like, that's also my, I believe in spirituality also, so I believe that if you give, there is, there is a system. And if, if you go out in the world, maybe not this person will give you something back, but why? Because, but, or you, you got some advice in the past, and in the end, it's, it always comes down that if you're giving, your, you will, yeah, your way will be way more beautiful and you will enjoy life way more. So you said a little bit about kind of the application process you can apply and people can also be recommended. Um, we talked a little bit about the giver part, but maybe something else like who would be the ideal applicant for Evor? For Evor? Yes. Um, people who want to change the world but are humble. I think uh, because Daniel also created, uh, created Sigma back then. This is, this is the crazy thing. <laughs> uh, and so... Um, or co-created Sigma with, with also the, the power of and, and, and the support of others. And I think that's also what Sigma is about. So it's like you want to change the world, you want to, to drive things forward and create a better world. And maybe you can add through technology, but I don't need, I don't, I guess the technology is not not uh, if you don't have technology you can also be part of the program i think but uh, i think it's most of the people are technology enabled so yeah. leverage the power of technologies um, to create um, impact in the world and i think to be honest i don't know 100 percent, but i think the personal component because daniel also did research on that in Cambridge. I, I, I know that he did something with, I, I don't know, to be honest, maybe it was with machine learning and with machine learning he tried to predict um, the personalities of founders or something like that. I don't know if, if I think it was Daniel maybe and he had some, some uh, research on that. So I think the, the people component, the personality component is one of the most important yeah. because also, yeah, if you are life will hit you especially if you're an entrepreneur and you need to have the ability to to have that resilience to stand up again and keep on doing and i think that's what what they yeah might filter um with the yeah hardest focus i, I would guess yeah cool awesome 
So maybe as a, before we go to Sigma Squared, because so what would you say kind of in one word makes a war unique, would you say? Um, the people. People, yes. The people. They have the huge network, they have the skills, yeah. Awesome, so we kind of teased a little bit Sigma Squared <laughs> and, and yeah, it's, it's just amazing. I think you're both a fellow and healthcare executive yeah. at Sigma Squared. And so I'm very interested in how do you actually foster and enable these connections between these super ambitious people because I mean it's worldwide, right? So how do you yeah. make that happen? That's a great question. Um, that's something I'm wondering also sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that's really the tricky part. Yeah. Because everyone at Sigma Square is super ambitious and they have so much on their plate yeah. um, because they are that ambitious. So you need to 100% be sure that what you're doing creates value for them. And um, my approach in the past um, was, and I did, I did it, I developed a concept recently, um, which, which I also um, had at Manager More, it's like the, the, the buddy program, we developed it at Manager More when COVID came mm -hmm. and um, then I realized I, I did it once there and so um, I had the idea of why not just do a copy and use it also, use the impact in Sigma and I think that worked great because what you, they don't need too many experts because everyone at, at Sigma has a huge network and they also know the experts and they are experts themselves. But what they really want and what they really need is time with other fellows. Because to talk about meaningful things, to also challenge ideas, because every Sigma person I was in a call until right now, no matter if they are in healthcare or if, I, if they do something completely different, was able to challenge me in a way and to challenge concepts I had in a way that I was like later on, oh crazy, that's an incredible idea. And I think you just need to make sure that you create a connection between the fellows and with the buddy system I think that this could work because the one-on-one -on -one connections are the most important because then you realize wow this creates so much value. Yeah. Maybe I share what I learned um, so that other people can see what the skill of this person is and then others can also approach this person and so you build like, how to call it, um, you build like... Uh, empowering people or uh, I would say you build evangelists and you make everyone an evangelist for connections and then they are super hyped to drive this forward and they are, have the intrinsic motivation to be like okay I want to have the conversation with this person out of this reason and you know that it doesn't depend what this person does at Sigma uh, it will be an incredible it will be a credible conversation and most of the time it's it's not about startups in the first way so I've I've talked to people who, who did an IPO who raised millions so multi millions of so three I think I don't know how many digits to be honest I don't know because they never talk about it so this is this is like crazy um, because you don't talk about those topics in the first way you talk about how are you doing and let's be real don't tell me yeah I'm doing great Tell me what are your challenges? Because of course on LinkedIn we are we are glamorous and everything works, but in real life there are so many challenges. And you talk with those people about the challenges and that's what helps you the most because then you realize, oh, if I solve that problem, I will be way more efficient in my working life and this is not the most important, but I will be also more happy in life and yeah. will, um, will be more grateful in life. And I think, yeah, that's it to be, to make a very long answer, the connection, the one-on-one -on -one connection between those people, because everyone, every connection there will create a huge benefit for everyone. Wow. It, it sounds like an amazing, amazing program. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> no, but really, because I think, so I think a lot of people sometimes struggle with getting to these meaningful connect, uh, yeah. conversations yes. because you're like, hey, I need you and then you're like, and I, I must be honest, like I hate the how are you doing question because mm. I'm always like, okay, you're not going to answer honestly a lot of times yeah. and you're like, I'm good and then the, like, the information level is zero. Mm. And I think 
like I think there is like these also these studies like how do you relate to people as either through experiences or through kind of also like being vulnerable and sharing yes, the things. And, absolutely. And I mean the, the glossy cover of LinkedIn is I mean you were like okay I'm happy for you like did mm -hmm. you one whatever or something but but it doesn't make me it doesn't foster these relationships and I think especially with these social media things people are really craving this this intimacy these human connections absolutely. which are which are there when you need something like when you are feeling down like and, and also when you're feeling up like people who are supporting you and cherishing and if you can create that at sigma then that's absolutely insane yeah and i think that's also one of the yeah, biggest assets i think the connection between those people and the people are the biggest asset at sigma by far because everything else develops yeah the fellows like would you say can you maybe abstract some kind of characteristics which most fellows have i mean you kind of look at the most ambitious founders under 26 so there's yeah. this kind of age limit but kind of in terms of like characteristics something you if people are wondering mm. now like do i fit in what would you say of course ambitious but the same level as ambitious humility and kindness mm -hmm. because there are crazy ambitious out there, uh, crazy ambitious people out there, yeah. but if they are not kind or humble, it doesn't work, yeah. by far not. Um, and it, will, it, won't, um, yeah, it won't contribute to the development of a healthy um, community. So I think humble, um, kind, um, they don't say it, but I know it's, I, I know it in every connection, it's like forward giving and also to be a giver. And then ambitious people are crazy ambitious, um, and that's all the time. When when I when I was at Manager Mora, I was like, "Holy cow! It's like incredible how competent and how crazy all those people are. Th those are the most incredible people I've seen in my life. I've met in my life, and at Sigmar, this happened again. So it was just the next step, but it happened again, and I was like, exactly the same feeling, and. I think that that's that's what what makes them what what makes the difference. And also, if you if you do the interviews, it's like it's not like oh, I need to do an interview. It's like hey, cool, I will meet an amazing person and I will have a great conversation with yeah. this person. And then I ask a lot of questions I need to classify, and then it's it's good. Yeah. Awesome. And I think yeah. So for anybody who's interested, I mean, so I'm gonna do also a little overview video on Sigma. But I think basically, it's so you cool. you need to proposed by somebody um, but you can also volunteer so there are other ways how you can get yeah. involved if, if, you, yeah. if that sounds interesting to you absolutely so i can also there are super interesting people you can you can talk to uh, for a sigma um, and i would love yeah. that they yeah, sound really really so yeah amazing and, and the kindness and, and and i mean at the end of the day i mean there are all these studies right i mean you are also a yeah. product of the people you surround yourself with that's the main reason and i mean that's insane if, if you can that's so cool Awesome. So, cool. thank you so much for all the insights and, and, and your honesty and then conversations we had. Maybe as a last one for our audience, something you maybe want to share, uh, any last words, tips, I don't know, whatever comes to mind. Uh, first of all, it was an amazing conversation. I, I love it because it was like, just like, okay, let's talk about those topics and it was so so easy. I really enjoyed it so much. So, thanks so again much. for having me and for, yeah making it possible to enjoy the, this hour of talking with you. And um, yeah, I think my, there are two things. Think big and don't be afraid that you think too big. You're not thinking too big. Just go out, go out, tell the world what you're doing. And this is the most, one of the most important things. I think the second most important thing, go out, go out because too less, there are so few people who do this. And way more people need to go out and tell the world what they are doing because then only this is the only reason um, when when other people can help you. And last but not least, be kind. I think that's that's the most important. Be kind and be a giver because then yeah, the world is beautiful and great things will happen. Wow, I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.